Okay, we are here, and uh, today that's a rather interesting snow cone. Huh. We're here, wherever, wherever here is. Um, yeah, excuse me, wherever here happens to be. Greetings everyone and welcome to Progressive Discussions. I'm your host uh, James P. Madonna and I am here with my co-host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Uh, a, a, we're, getting, we're having pre-summer weather here in uh, just about mid-June. Pre-summer weather. It is hazy, hot, and humid. And it will be hotter in the next few days. We're, we're, uh, uh, it will be above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Today it's 85, right. something like that. Yeah. So, therefore, in honor of the um, the hazy, lazy, crazy days of summer, like that song, the old song, I am now trying, or we are now trying, Yinling Summer Wheat Beer. So I'm assuming no barley is used, probably wheat and hops. I'm only guessing. Uh, I guess you can see the label. Yinling Summer Wheat. All right, and uh, there's a German word here. Um, I am not a, a, a craft beer expert like um, Professor uh, Dave Coulter, hey, hey. but there is a German word. Yeah, it says frozen. <laughs> no, that's because I had it for an hour in the freezer, right? Yeah. No, there is a German word for wheat beer. In other words, it's not a new invention. No. Um. Oh. I fucked up. Oh no! What did I do? What did I do? I grabbed the. I grab. Wait, I bet the other one is a wheat beer. Hold on. I grabbed. What the hell is this? I grabbed the lager by mistake. All right. So for the second half, of the, what a what a dope I am. Uh, I, I blame I blame family at home for distracting me. <clears throat> Son of a bitch! I hate making mistakes. The second beer, the second bottle of semi-frozen craft beer for the second half of progressive discussions will be. Yinling summer wheat. So, but we're because I grabbed the wrong one, son of a bitch. This is a traditional lager, Yinling traditional lager, like we had last week. But nevertheless, it's still Yinling, America's oldest brewery, Pottsville, Pennsylvania, uh, founded in um, 1829. 1829. Huh. Thanks for saving me on that. Seven lucky bells for this show, for this week, Progressive Discussions. Let me do a quick Chisler's Hall of Shame. Uh-oh. Progresso Soups, shame on you. I thought that was your lunch. Progre no, no, it's not. Progresso Soups, shame on you. First, they decided to to provide much less meat and more vegetable filler cheap filler nice. with very little beef in the beef pot roast with country vegetables country vegetables what country they don't even specify um, um, could be grown anywhere really a beef a, 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 all the beef soups with vegetables they've done it cheap filler wow. mostly potatoes and much less meat, but they've gone even, they, the CEOs of the American food industry have taken this even further. Now, what they're doing is, they're trying to replace the beef and the vegetables with larger, wider chunks of potato. What's the first ingredient? That's... Water? So they're, 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 they're increasing the cheap filler. Well, yeah. They're increasing it, the scumbags. And these are the people <laughs> that you flag-waving evangelical zealot red state morons keep on voting for, the corporate whore Republicans that 
are, are in bed with America's CEOs. Okay, uh, beef broth, first ingredients, beef broth, oh. second ingredients, potatoes. There you go. Followed by carrots, uh -huh. cooked dried seasoned beef and modified food starch. Ah! Well, that I guess that gives it thickness. A little thickness. It's not that uh, thick. Uh, so they're even cheap with the food starch because when my mom eats this, it's quite watery. It's quite liquidy. But for the first time ever, big, wide, potatoes. squared hunks of potato. So now the uh, uh, the wonderful corporate American CEOs have decided to show further contempt for their consumers and and increase the cheap filler of this particular soup and of course Marie Callender is bad too because I, I showed that the last time yeah. but Progresso is the biggest uh, culprit and uh, it used to be a family-owned company right here in the Garden State of New Jersey mm -hmm. and it was sold out to a, to a big corporation and everything that goes corporate uh, they start to cut corners they cut corners and uh, in this case the old standby cheap beef. filler uh, is used so where's the beef? yeah it's not like well, what is that it's Arby's we have the beef, beef. We have the meat. Okay. Everything we discuss politically on this show is part of our series, Crapitalism in a Conch Shell. That's right. Crapitalism in a Conch Shell. Mm -hmm. Yes, King Neptune. I will I will bring it up. No problem. Yes. Ooh, I should have paid attention when I grabbed the beers. But at least I have one summer wheat for the second half of the show. And I will definitely mention it uh, during the second half of the show. So uh, I know it makes it makes it interesting when I mix things up, you know. Uh, uh, but I did lager last week and and previously, and uh, uh, I did uh, uh, India Pale IPA lager, India Pale lager, rather. Um, next is I have to do a, an India Pale ale. That's true. Right, true. I did stout here too. I did. I did uh, uh, porter. That's right. I did Yinling porter, which is like a stout. I still haven't found out the difference between a stout and a porter. Some claim they use cocoa in making the porter, as hey. opposed to not using cocoa in the stout. I'll find out. All right. I'll mention that that other subject too. All right. I would. I would like to uh, make a toast that uh, now the great Gary No. Uh, is a member of our group Holistic Health Talk on Facebook. Cheers. Congratulations and welcome to the group, Mr. Gary No. He posted um, a, um, I guess he's doing um, live stream, uh, um, live streaming on Facebook with his uh, long running afternoon talk show that he does usually at 12 noon. He's he's Nobody. live streaming it on his uh, the Progressive Radio Network page. Nobody ever answered my friend thing. Yeah, I froze the hell out of this beer. You're sure in hell did. Mine is melting down now. Uh -huh. Well, yeah, because you can see yours is growing up there. You mean that it's ready to shoot another load? No, it's. Oh, getting, you mean it's melty? Yeah, it's getting. Okay. It's getting beer instead of uh, ice. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. It's not, you know, I mean, it's better. It's better to have overly frozen It'll be there. than to have a warm or room temperature beer. Like uh, people in Great Britain, right? They like to drink room temperature beers and ales. God knows why. I don't know. I have no idea. Um. Okay, I, I, I just w I would like to say that uh, any poor or middle class, especially lower middle class American, that votes Republican is a brain cell deficient imbecile and should jump into uh, the li a live 
a volcano, either Mount St. Helens or the super volcano at Yellowstone National Park. You're a waste of sperm. There is no logical reason whatsoever why a person that lives week to week, month to month, pay, uh, I mean fixed income or paycheck to paycheck should ever vote for someone that never had your best interests, that does not work for you whatsoever, only works for the, the rich, top, the top 2%, corporate CEOs, they do not have your best interest at all. And therefore, if they make you promises during their campaign, they are lying to you, and they have. As time. has Mr. Trump. Right, right on. Time at the time, at the time, right. at the time, at the time. They lied. Uh, like a sociopath, looking you straight in the eye, mm -hmm. smiling, waving, doing this, like Trump does. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, like a sociopath, uh, blatantly lie to you. But you should know that they're not working for you. By now. By now, after all these decades. And you should know, after all these decades, that it was Ronald Reagan who, who uh, shifted the uh, tax responsibility. I won't use the, the word burden because uh, for the rich it should not be a burden. The tax responsibility off the shoulders of the rich and onto the middle class over 30 years ago it was Ronald Reagan. And also, the biggest uh, tidbit of all is that trickle-down economics was always a big lie. There is no trickle-down. So, so if you, <laughs> you jabronis out there in, in, in America believe that trickle-down works and believe the lies, you know, uh, uh, then you are lacking brain cells. Now, I want to really bash, and it infuriates me because I don't understand it. Mm. I want to really bash the people of Wisconsin, the state of Wisconsin. You are sitting right next to a very prosperous, true, progressive state of Minnesota where the people are intelligent enough to elect progressive candidates and they are doing quite well with their progressive governor. You're right next to, uh, to Minnesota. But do you learn anything from Minnesotans, from Minnesota? Hell no, you don't learn a damn thing from them because you continue to vote Republican. You, you, you elect and re-elect a Republican governor in Scott Walker. Mm. You, you elect and re-elect Paul Ryan. Uh, yeah. he's, he's a congressman or a senator? Congressman, he's uh, head of the House. Yeah, all right, uh, um, okay. Uh, Speaker of the House, they call him. Speaker. Right? Uh, Paul Ryan. Mr. Speaker! You... Elect and re-elect Republican Paul Ryan. The, all these people, and also there are other Republicans that are in Washington that you elect and re-elect. One of them just said the other day that he insists that the planet Earth is only six thousand years old. He's one of those evangelicals. Now, what the hell is an e what the hell is a right-wing evangelical doing from a northern Yankee state? like Wisconsin that borders on Canada. You figure all the red states would be down south or out west. Yeah. At least down south. But Wisconsin is a northern Yankee Doodle Dandy state. But to ask him where he gets that information because it ain't in the Bible. The Bible is just the opposite. It's, uh, they, they, they can't prove it. Psalm 104.30. Woo! Read it. 104.30 The face of the earth had to be renewed Not the earth itself. I can't believe I made this mistake. Yeah, anyway. Okay. Yeah, the point is and to all you Zealot evangelical right-wing Republican voting morons a Fertilized human egg is no more a baby than an acorn is an oak tree and is, it is no different than the eggs in my <coughs> Spanish omelet. Ugh. Because in the Bible, according to what I was taught by the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, 
the only time the Bible mentions when life begins is when God gave the first breath to Adam. Is that right, sir? That's correct. Okay. Other than that, the Bible doesn't specify. And besides, in the Old Testament, God used to smite uh, 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 women, right. wi uh, uh, women, children, senior citizens, uh, younger people. He used to smite all of them. Innocent with the guilty, yes. Right, now. Because, so, you, know, because you know why? Because why, he has why? the power of life and death. Well, he probably he probably figures he's going to resurrect everybody. That's anyway. correct. He has promised that. So uh, he wants to give he wants to give the people a chance. In other words, to uh, grow in an area or a time when the devil is not here to lead them astray. Since there'll only be yeah. one way to go. Well, apparently, it seems like everything is a test. Well, yeah, it is a test. Everything you don't want somebody a, a, a father doesn't want his children to uh, love him uh, because uh, he he threatens them all the time yeah. and, or forces them. He wants voluntary love and respect and devotion. So you know, I mean, he I guess that's why he gave the angels and mankind free will. Okay. Um, Otherwise, he would be commanding robots. Yeah, you have pre-programmed androids, cyborgs. You know, I shall love you, Master, because uh, that is what I was created to do. That's what my brain tells me to do. I shall be devoted. He doesn't want that. That's why they gave data an emotional sensor. Yeah. Oh, that's coming uh, with our tech, especially with Japan. Oh, that, that that's that's almost <laughs> here. But uh, uh, but God did uh, let his big honchos live to a very ripe old age. Mm -hmm. Your Methuselahs and your uh, all the all the fat cats of the Old Testament live for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. You know, it's bothering me because I don't want people to think that I'm 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 um, I'm a Republican. I'm Donald Trump, and I'm full of shit. Hold on. I do. I do. I did meant to bring a Yinling summer wheat. And there is the summer wheat that we will drink for the second half of the show. Hopefully you can see the label. Yeah, yeah, the lazy, yeah, hazy, yeah. crazy days of summer. Yeah. All right. Okay, there it is. Summer wheat. Summer wheat. wheat and yeah. I think the German word might be on here. Oh, it is the German word for tr traditional wheat beer is Weizen. Capital W E I Z E N Weizen, as in Eisenman. Weizen beer is wheat beer. Okay. And for, for those that are, are going to comment about me getting up and down, go fuck yourself. And and if you go tell William Morrow, tell him to go fuck himself too. Because we had He'll a big, never see we it. had a huge falling out. Anyway. He'll never see it. Well, he's retired anyway. I gave him the pink slip. He got the big pink slip, even though I've known him for over 30 years. He deserved the pink slip. I should have put a can of beets on on his uh, his his desk. Beets. And a can of beets with a little uh, sticky sign that says "Beat it." Oh. Isn't that a clever way to fire somebody? You put a can of beets on their desk. Those are the levity bells. They're actually pa authentic, old-fashioned, pagan Christmas jingle bells. Uh, uh, the, uh, Yule, the Yule, um, some winter Yule, winter solstice. Yeah, the Yule, that's the pagan holiday. Winter solstice Yule. You'll and, be and, and, and we're no, no jadrules. You'll be sorry. That's an Italian slang for cucumber heads. So anyway, getting back to imbeciles that vote Republican. No logical reason at all. Now, what, what pisses me off also is that the former Bernie Kratz, the Bernie Sanders supporters over at Our Revolution are obsessed with changing, reforming, and saving the Democratic Party. There's no talk whatsoever about forming a third Progressive Party 
that does not take contributions from the rich, from corporations. There's no talk. I tried to so, tell you last So these week. people might be neoliberal, uh, politically correct. Uh, 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 you know the ones that like affirmative action and all those programs? The neoliberals? We already had progressive parties and populist parties. They were sub... sub uh, they were drawn into the Democratic Party. Unfortunately. Which had more people in it. In other words, the bodies, the bodies, otherwise known as the votes, were in the Democratic Party. Are in the Democratic Party, but yeah. what the Democratic Party did in 2016 was very corrupt, mm -hmm. very underhanded and unethical. Well. And 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 gave them a really bad name, which allowed Donald Trump to get elected because many people in America that normally vote Democrat, that are kind of progressive at, at certain levels, they all stood home. They didn't right, bother they didn't to out. vote. They didn't yeah. come out. Less people came out to vote in 2016 than even 2014. Less people. That, that, that is a bad thing. Because when, 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 the, when the little guy doesn't, does not vote, the Republican always gets elected. Well, the uh, the rich take over. Well, that's naturally, what they do. Naturally. That is their propaganda. Their propaganda is to keep you away from voting. Then you have okay. Then you have voter suppression with these right. these bullshit voter IDs. Then you have gerrymandering. And then you have all the all sneaky of that tricks. Stuff, all of that tricks to keep you keep you from voting. They don't want people of color to vote. They don't oh. want minorities to vote. They don't want. Uh, uh, the masses of, of young people in college to vote. They don't want the uh, 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 they don't want all women to vote because when all these people vote, they vote Democrat because they know the Democrats will throw them like my my late crumbs. my yeah. late grandfather John Nicolosi used to say hey, Nicolosi they crumbs the Democrats will throw you a handful of crumbs. But the Republicans will give you absolutely nothing unless you're part of the top 2%. Yeah. Of course, yeah. But anyway, that's it. My tirade is over. I said enough. Uh, it is now time to sink our teeth into these readings. Well, Even let's though not forget that what is going on right now with repealing and destroying uh, Obamacare is nothing. Sabotage. But a, a, but a tax cut for the rich. That's, well, that's all, all it that's is. All that's about. why it ain't going to work. Hey, when, when Chris Christie uh, was babbling a long time ago about defunding Planned Parenthood because they're baby killers, uh -huh. I don't think the Republicans really give a shit about the about the uh, the fetuses and the embryos and the fertilized eggs. I think that the I think that what bothers them is that tax money is going towards a program that helps low-income people. Correct. They want to defund it because it helps low-income women, single Correct. mothers. Correct. But if it's a program that helps the rich, they're all for it. Correct. And and if if 60%, almost 60% of the total budget goes towards the military-industrial complex, the Republicans love that too. Yeah. Because that's uh, that's uh, jobs and work for their people. Their people. Their people. Their people. But if it's something that helps the ma the mainstream masses, which includes the poor and the middle class, well, the shrinking middle class, that's no good. Like right now, they're claiming that fifty thousand jobs were created in in coal. In the last month or so, is it that new? A big lie. A big lie. Is it that new clean coal that Republicans talk oh, about? Well, I'm sure That's it like is. the Clear Skies Amendment, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Or right to work. We are. We are a right to work state. That's just a fancy way of saying fuck you, uh, employees. <laughs> really? That. That's a. Uh, um, what's his name? Uh, Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Shatner? Not Shatner. Shatner. Shakter. Shat. No, that, 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 that scumbag who's the CEO of uh, Papa John Pizza. 
uh, uh, Sch I don't know Sch right, Schnatter right. or something. I don't he, know right. Yeah, he uh, he says that we're no, we're under no obligation to share the company's yeah, prosperity right. with yeah, the employee yeah, 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 with yeah. our employees. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Which which debunks the whole trickle down economics uh, theory. Well, we are we are. What, under what does he do without his employees and the customers? He has no business. What is he going to do? He's going to make a million pizzas every day yeah, for all the for Papa what? John's. So if he says "fuck you, employees," then it's it's his sorry ass that's got to make millions of pizzas for everybody. And you know, well, it's his sorry ass when the people that cus from his, his customers say, you know, uh, boycott. You're a piece of shit, man. I don't like I don't like the way you talk because I got a sister that works for a company like yours. And when you say that, my family's being affected. You know, I mean, a lot of customers could easily boycott Papa John Pizza or any any American company. Yeah. They they seem to forget that these uh, that corporate America needs mm -hmm. the consumer. They need us. Mm -hmm. We do not need them. That's right. Any, anybody can run really? a business. I could I could buy I okay. could buy your competitor's product very easily. I could I, I could easily do that. Yeah. Oh, Unfortunately, the, the American people do not know the power of the boycott. Oh, um, there was a French a, people do. Oh, Europeans do, without yeah. a doubt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're very proactively progressive. Yeah. Uh, Americans. Um, yeah. And and they're also aggressive progressives. I, I I saw an interesting banner showing all of the the. Uh, the butter replacements, the uh, the new so-called safe margarines without uh -oh. trans fats that are uh, owned by Monsanto, oh, yeah, and cool. guess what? The, uh, one of them happens to be the famous Country Crock. Oh yeah, I know somebody who buys it. And I can't believe it's not butter. Yeah, same thing. That's yeah. another Monsanto baby. Yeah. There's a whole list of them. Yeah. That uh, I actually I should. Actually, I, I should put it on the show. Yeah. Being that this show is unlike my other shows, which are live streamed on YouTube. And you, yes, you heard it right. Live streamed. Live streamed. This show is pre recorded. So, you know what? I will put that banner and show people the Monsanto uh, food products that involve uh, butter replacement. And incidentally, butter happens to be a. a, a very nutritious uh, food compared it is, to it, margarine. It, it, yes. Well, no, but people people don't yeah. realize that butter is rich in fat soluble vitamins. Oh yeah. And uh, and also um, uh, uh, there was an article. Occasionally, I find them. Uh, somebody kind enough to uh, post them does uh, uh, explaining uh, uh, the all the. Um, the virtues of egg yolks, that eggs are not oh, bad for you. Egg God. yolks are another natural nutritional powerhouse. Phosphatidylcholine, uh, uh, less, uh, lecithin, right? Egg, egg yolk uh -huh. lecithin. Uh, uh, iron. Uh, protein, baby, protein. Uh, no, 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 I'm talking about the yolks now. Uh -huh. uh, um, biotin, um, uh, other B vitamins, um, uh -huh. uh, uh, essential fatty acids, uh, but but mostly lecithin. Uh, lecithin egg egg yolk lecithin is uh, superior to the uh, soy lecithin. I think they went with soy because it was cheaper, uh, Doctor Bill. Maybe easier to get, you know. Yeah. Well, especially all that all that uh, all that American-grown, genetically modified soybeans that get exported, by the way, to to uh, to Asia. Wow. At least it ain't here, but unfortunately for Asia. Corn used in American food products is most likely genetically modified corn. Yeah. I you would know. say almost 90%. Like all your high fructose corn syrup uh, spike products is probably GMO corn. Mm. The uh, Republican-led House... Unfortunately approved sweeping legislation on Thursday to undo much of former President Barack Obama's landmark banking law 
created after the 2008 economic uh, crisis. Oh, is that when, in the old days, when the Bank of America used to, to rip people off with all those fees? Back in the old days? Well, they weren't so old. Wells Fargo just did it back when. <laughs> uh, that caused millions of Americans to lose their jobs and homes. The party line vote was 233 to 186. As Republicans argued the rules designed to prevent another meltdown were making it harder for community banks to lend and hampering the economy. No Democratic lawmakers supported the measure. Only Republicans opposed it. Our community banks are in trouble, said Speaker Paul Ryan. Oh, oh my heart bleeds for, for the big banks. They are crushed by the costly rules imposed on them by the Dodd-Frank Act. Oh, they're crushed. Huh? This law may have had good intentions, but its consequences have been dire for Main Street. House passage was widely expected. But the Republican overhaul of the 2010 Dodd-Frank law is unlikely to clear the Senate in its current form. Senators have said they'll spend the next few months trying to find common ground on legislation designed to boost the economy. Donald Trump had said he wanted to a big number on Dodd-Frank. And the House votes marks progress toward the goal. The overall bill targets the heart of the law's restrictions on banks by offering a trade-off. Banks could qualify for most of the regulatory relief in the bill so long as they meet a strict requirement for building capital to cover unexpected big losses. Democrats defended the Dodd-Frank law, saying that it was meant financial, it has meant financial security for millions of people, and that on doing it would encourage the kind of risky lending practices that invite future economic shocks. They also oppose efforts to sharply curtail a consumer protection agency's power to pursue companies that it determines have participated in unfair or deceptive practices in their financial products and services. See what Republicans do? They like the guilty to go free. Well, Ill, they're all for ill-gotten gains. Ill-gotten yes, gains are. is uh, how they become part of the top two percent. That's correct. The right wing, you know. Uh, uh, he who makes a haste to be rich shall not be innocent. It's in the Bible. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau has returned $29 billion to 12 million consumers who were victims of deceptive marketing, discriminatory lending, or other financial wrongdoing. You see how they like to make the money go to the evil, to those on top. Yeah. You don't like the money going to the those who are deceived, and those who, you know, ended up with bad lending practices. The, the victims, they don't like money going to them. Well, don't forget, if somebody if a big company, if a big bank or a big corporation makes um, really bad mistakes and screws themselves and, and, and goes belly up, well, guess what? There's plenty of good, honest, smaller companies and smaller banks to take their place. I thought that was the American way. Uh, <laughs> not, not Competition is not the not, American way. Not the too big to fail, uh, too big to jail. You know, I mean, I thought it was, I thought monopolies were bad for capitalism. Ooh. 
Reagan used to say things like that. that no, monopolies, so did Teddy Roosevelt. Monopolies were not good for capitalism. Of course not. Capitalism. Well, Teddy Roosevelt was a uh, sort of a progressive Republican like Dwight Eisenhower. That's correct. He's All a, we're doing is a good egg. Is spending our time taking away protections for the American people and their futures. Have we learned nothing? Asked Representative Steny Hoyle. Steny. Democrat, Maryland. Oh. Several Democratic lawmakers insisted they were willing to make some changes to Dodd Frank, but said the Republican bill went too far. The bottom line is we put an end to the Wild West of Wall Street and we're on a nice steady playing field. We should be able to adjust to it. We should not throw it out. The bill would repeal a rule that bans banks from engaging in trading for their own profit using federally insured deposits or forming certain relationships with private equity funds. It would roll back a proposed rule that investment advisors who collect commissions must put their clients' interests ahead of their own. Also, financial regulators would lose the power to dismantle a failing financial firm and sell off the pieces if they decided its collapse could endanger the system. Instead, the bill would let banks fall under an expanded part of bankruptcy law. The overall of Dodd-Frank was crafted by Representative Jeb Hensoling of Texas. Is this a is this a popular southern name for, for men? Jeb? Jeb. It's Chairman like of the House Services Committee. Hanserling said consumers have suffered as a result of Dodd-Frank. We see free checking cut in half at banks. Bank fees are up. The ranks of the unbanked have increased, increased, he said. For many credit-worthy bar borrowers, they are paying $500 or more for an auto loan. <coughs> have you tried getting a mortgage lately? They're harder to come by and they cost hundreds of dollars yeah. more to close. The American Bankers Association applauded the House vote saying the bill would fix financial rules that are holding back the U.S. economy and doing little to enhance safety and soundness. Consumers Union criticized the vote, called on the Senate to reject this rollback of critical consumer protections. Representative Walter Jones of North Carolina was the only Republican to vote against mm. the bill. Hmm. Yeah, the ill-gotten gains, the hallmark and hi hypocrisy, two yeah. hallmarks, uh, uh, two, two uh, written in stone traits of right-wing Republicans, hypocrisy and the desire for ill-gotten gains. Yeah, they um, want to go through another one. Speaking another of another meltdown. Speaking of automobiles, my sister just got a, a new um, <coughs> Honda Accord, a four-door, uh, a leftovers, a 2017 leftover. She got a, she got an excellent deal, so Ooh. she got that. My sister Lisa. Uh, um, okay. Dear Abby, all right, we're going to a little change of paste, paste. tomato paste. I am a 24-year-old professional woman. Oh, wow. At 24, she's a professional already? Who has been having an affair she, with a married man for three escort, years. an escort? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Married man, huh? Not good. We have great chemistry. 
a passionate uh, sex life, uh, <laughs> sure. endless laughs, and give each other a lot of support. And give each other a lot of pipe, too. He's married, has children. Oh, gosh. And when he is with them, I find myself incredibly jealous. She's in no position to be feeling that way. In other words, he's still living with his wife. I feel left out. And I no longer believe he will ever be with me. So he's having relations with his wife and, and this woman. And, 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 and he's, he's bringing home... Oh my gosh. Oh boy. Although he says he will. Because of his legal status in the United States, it could take a few years before he becomes a citizen. Oh, oh, so is he... And is, he, is able to divorce. He's a Latin gentleman? He's probably partaking in a, in a little cream in his coffee. He wants a little cream in his coffee. Should we take a break and revisit our relationship? In a few years, creme de la creme. She's Caucasian, and he's. Uh, I get it now. Or should I stick by him until everything is sorted out? Oh boy, you know that this dear Abby is uh, not going to be happy about her uh, choices. <laughs> Answer. <laughs> Here it comes. I'm all for taking a break. The status quo is painful. As things stand, there are no guarantees your lover will ever leave his wife and children for you. Well, statistically shows that they don't, in most if, cases. <laughs> if you take a break, you might meet someone who is eligible and actually will and able to build a future with you. I say, take a break. Abby is very, um, uh, very low liberal and non-judgmental about this. She should be scolding this woman for for fooling around with a married man who still lives with his wife. But she doesn't do that. Maybe the old Abigail Van Buren would have. It's a very immoral world <coughs> we're living in. Very immoral world with many sociopaths. Ugh. Sociopaths, you know? Um... Yeah, we got some time, you know. We, oh, yeah. We're not that bad. We're not that bad. <clears throat> that This clock is accurate, by the way. Both of them are accurate. So what you're saying is this clock behind me is accurate. Therefore, that is accurate. Yeah. But are they both accurate to the no. time on the, no. cable, on the cable TV? No. Then, that's not, then they're not accurate. Or the atomic clock. So you should be setting, somebody should be setting this clock to the cable television time. That is two minutes fast. What if you put it two minutes behind? Would it keep, This is probably... Would it keep time? A minute fast. Then you have... A, I have a clock that you're supposed to plug in and it will set itself to the atomic clock. Yeah, I was... And just, guess what? What happened to it? It doesn't do it. Because because you buy everything cheap. And cheap, it costs me over $24. Well, then you better give them a, 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 a piece of your mind. Same thing with that one over there. You better keep they give them a piece of your mind then. Man, a piece of my mind is going to cost me money to mail it back. Oh, that's right. You have to, uh -huh. pay, you have to pay the ship. Well, there's always uh, uh, United States Postal Service a two-day priority for, for $6.40 some odd cents. Is that what it's up to? Yeah. Up to? That's dirt cheap. It used to be 515. <laughs> 640 and he's complaining. I used to send magazines in uh, uh, if it fits it ships. Yeah, they have in yeah, it's envelope. very it's very United States Postal Postal Service has very reasonable shipping. And for international shipping, and this goes for people that have um, companies that make products. And you know, <clears throat> if you get um, international customers ordering, DHL is has the best rates for international shipping. Cool. Yeah. But still, you got to get it, find the box, or um, 
a, a, a bubble envelope and you got to make sure the product is going to get back to the company right. safely and securely and blah 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 in order to get your refund of course they should they should uh, reimburse you uh -huh. for your cost of shipping since they sent you a defective item whatever they don't they don't reimburse you for the, your cost of shipping but they sent you the defective item I don't care they don't do it well that's not right it's not that, that, that's that's unethical it's American business oh why do people let them get away with it how did he get away with it they're in charge there are people that are in charge. In other words, they, they turn around, they can turn around and say, we're not going to reimburse you for your shipping costs. Is that what they do? It's within their, it's within their power with their lawyers and the law to do that. They send you a defective item yeah. that doesn't work. Yeah. Let's say it's, it's you yeah. order a beautiful, uh, what seems to be a high technology office clock. <laughs> okay. Or let's say it's that clock the black and white, the clock with the black and white cat whose eyeballs go Phoenix to the, to, yeah, uh, to the left, to the right, and the tail wags. Let's say, let's say Felix's eyeballs are not moving and his tail is not moving. So you got a defective Felix the cat clock. So you send it back. They won't reimburse you for your end of the shipping. Depends on the company. If the company wants to keep you as a consumer, they'll do reimburse be nice. you. They will, they, right. will, they will help you out. Yeah. But uh, other, Normally, other, no. Otherwise, you get the old capitalism treatment. Right. So sorry, we no reimburse you. There you go. Okay. This hasn't happened before. <coughs> the former FBI director publicly called the President of the United States a liar. You know, I was going to ask you if you had any readings on James Comey. Well, you have one. <laughs> and he returned the favor. Trump returned a favor and called him a liar. So then that'll go back and forth forever, unless somebody is proven to be the real liar. With the real liar, please step forward. Step please. forward. Yeah. Ousted <laughs> FBI Director James Comey's testimony before the Senate Intelligence Committee didn't settle whether associates of Donald Trump colluded with Moscow's meddling in last year's presidential campaign nor did it receive excuse me resolve whether Trump campaign or himself is guilty of obstruction of justice but in two days of headlines making allegations that the president's private lawyer then flatly denied Comey painted a devastating portrait of a president who he says lied in public and bulldozed in private through the governmental norms designed to protect the rule of law. Well, didn't Comey also uh, work very hard in protecting Hillary Clinton? No. And where were you in the last election? His letter that came out oh, was Loretta, devastating. It was, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was Loretta Lynch, Gee. who had who who had a hands-off policy. Loretta Lynch, who had a hands-off policy, and, and and President Barack Obama too, had a hands-off policy uh, concerning uh, Hillary Clinton. His accounts, which Comey says are backed up by contemporaneous memos are guaranteed to fuel the multiple investigations that continue to cast a cloud over the White House with consequences ahead that are impossible to predict. And whatever happens next, the back and forth accusations of suspicion, dishonesty and wrongdoing between the President of the United States and the man who had served as one of the most senior law enforcement officials riveted the political world. I was honestly concerned he might lie about the nature of our meeting. So I thought it was really important to document, Comey said, when asked why he wrote accounts of his encounters with Trump as soon as they were over. 
something he hadn't done at the meetings with Bush or Obama. Indeed, after Trump fired Comey last month, Comey said the president offered shifting explanations that were lies, plain and simple. I bet Donald Trump enjoyed saying the word, you're fired, to James Comey. Yeah. <laughs> Just a mile and a half from the Senate hearing room during nearly three hours of testimony, Trump restrained from tweeting. You did? That must have been really tough for him. Yeah, I think it sure it was. The twi Twitler. His nickname is Twitler. Adolf Twitler on, on Twitter. Also, Trumpy declined to respond to reporters. But the president's personal attorney, Mark Kasowitz, read a statement to reporters gathered at the National Press Club accusing Comey of making unauthorized disclosures to the press of pri privileged communications with the president and suggesting that might be fodder for an investigation itself. I've been reading articles where uh, you know some articles say you know it was Hillary Clinton was very much Tie, very much tied in with uh, 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 Vladimir Putin's Russia and other articles say it was Donald Trump that's very much tied in with, with Vladimir Putin's Russia. Maybe they're both. Maybe they both had business dealings with Russia. It wouldn't surprise me. Well, two-party system. The FBI uh -huh. would have the information. They are doing the investigation. The, as a separate entity? As an impartial separate entity? For real? Yeah. Okay. Because we so know... whatever we, comes out, you know, we will know in a short time, I'm sure. Because we, we, we know full and well that the CIA is not an impartial organization. <laughs> that was a reference to Comey's jaw-dropping disclosure that he had allowed a friend to read portions of one of those memos to a reporter for the New York Times. Trump told Comey he hoped he would let go of the investigation into former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. The Justice Department named former FBI Director Robert Mueller as special counsel. See? In response to two of Comey's most serious allegations, Kazowitz said Trump never told the FBI director that he expected loyalty from him and never suggested he curb the Flynn <laughs> investigation. <laughs> Kazowitz and other Trump defenders noted that Comey confirmed he had told Trump he wasn't personally under investigation for collusion with Russia and that Comey testified he didn't believe the president tried to interfere into the broader FBI inquiry. Comey did not emerge unscathed from his testimony. He said he decided to arrange the leak of the Flynn story after Trump had tweeted that James Comey better hope that there are no tapes of our conversation <laughs> before uh, he starts leaking to the press. The dictator Trump. This anecdote might provide some ammunition for Trump allies who have urged the president to curtail his Twitter activity. That sort of one-step-removed manipulation of the news is not unusual in Washington. But it is rare to have a senior official acknowledge that he was behind it. Comey also said he might have been cowardly 
in not more directly confronting Trump about conduct he saw as inappropriate. Comey came across as measured, serious, and lawyerly. He showed an aw shucks demeanor when he demurred he was no Captain Courageous. <laughs> Captain Courageous. And expressed the hope that the White House would release tapes of his conversations with the president if they exist. The hearing was political theater laced with legal risk and electoral repercussions. Comey's testimony came as some Republicans warned of major setbacks in next year's congressional midterm elections if the embattled Trump White House can't find its footing and the troubling Russian investigations cannot be resolved. It was one of those Washington events with multiple listeners in mind, from the senators on the Intelligence Committee to the nationwide television audience, and of course an audience of one special counsel, Robert Mueller. Mm -hmm. Interesting. You know, uh, somebody, someone from News 12 New Jersey, Optimum Cablevision, rang my doorbell. Wanted, wanted a, some, uh, the woman named Jeanette wanted to interview me a little bit. And um, it turns out that a relative of hers uh, worked for uh, uh, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie mm -hmm. and said that as working directly with Chris Christie, you, you have to get authorization before you even sneeze mm -hmm. in front of him. So it sounds like uh, becoming, it uh, sounds like being uh, an overbearing, uh, obnoxious dictator is, is, uh, seems to be a common trend with Republicans, uh, uh, being a control freak, you know what I mean? Um, so, there's a pattern, there's definitely a pattern here. Um, well, you see what happened with that Republican guy who just got elected in, uh, one of the, uh, Midwestern states when uh -huh. he... When he uh, body slammed the uh, reporter from the Guardian. Really? Yeah. He body slammed the Guardian. Uh, you know. He probably watches journalist. WWE pro wrestling. And then uh, got elected. Ah! Well, that's because the people who who vote for Republicans yeah. out yonder, out of yonder, in them dar states, they like all this reactionary stuff and aggression. You know, and bullying and all that. Well, yeah, they think that uh, you're doing something when you do that. Because they they want to go around beating people up. Yeah. Like uh, somebody pepper maced uh, a um, uh, some a, a girl was protesting Donald Trump at a Trump rally, uh -huh. and some redneck uh, they just went over and pepper maced her eyeballs, and she's a young, unarmed young college kid, you know. Uh, uh, that's how they are. They're they're not. Uh, they're um, makes them feel they're doing something. I think Carl Sagan, the late great Carl Sagan, said it uh, at one time that um, um, society will degress. Uh, how people who vote right wing are like the the least common denominators of the human race, or uh. or the least. In other words, they're they're not they're not the cream of the crop of humanity. Those that generally vote right wing. No, they're easily led. They're they're like the lemmings. And they're caught up in emotion. Yeah. They're caught up in the emotion of it, not in not in facts or in science, but in the emotion. No, they don't give them time. They don't if they could. They don't give themselves time enough to peruse a subject. Ah, well, you think about it. Well, Jeanette told me from from uh, um, News 12 New Jersey. Jeanette says that every time she debated New Jersey Republicans, they tried to shout her down. That's right. I told you how many times they talk over you. The the, the, the blowhorn. They interrupt you. And when let's say they go they go off on a tangent, when you've asked them a question, they haven't answered it. 
and 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 they pretend that they did. Well, uh, 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 back in the day, uh, uh, Bill O'Reilly and Sean Hannity would always cut off and interrupt their guests if their guests were, let's say, progressive. They're big cutter-offers. Absolutely. Big time. Before we go to lunch, I just want to show people the beautiful bouquet of flowers that one of our admirers sent us, Carol. Carol from Ohio. Uh, uh, sent us this and say, I want to thank James P. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman for doing a fantastic job <laughs> with their grassroots revolution yeah. talk show progressive discussions. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's in tiny letters because it's on a card. And we, I really learned so much from you guys. You guys shoot straight from the hip. Yeah. No holds barred news, uh, uh, fighting uh, censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. I love your show. Keep up the great work. You pull no punches. You're number one. Thank Hello. you, Carol. Thank you. Hello, Carol. Thank, thank you, Carol, very much. We appreciate sending us those be that beautiful bouquet of flowers. Now we will go to lunch and you will see how to defeat a conservative Bible verses followed by <laughs> promo. And then we'll catch you on the balance of the show. And this time we will have the Wizen beer, summer wheat beer by Yinling. Cool. And I will have neutralized the mistake I made before. Cool. Oh, that's, that's good to hear. Cool. Cool. Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman, in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. 
Besides the reading of censored, newsletter censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like newsletter censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk and progressive discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co-host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Okay, we're back. We're back from this is progressive discussions, the balance of our show, and this time we will have the Yinling. I can smell the difference. The Yinling, America's oldest. What the fuck? You got you got more left in here? No. Hey, you got the, more left in here. You're supposed to drink no, it. No, pour the rest You're in. You're supposed to drink it. I didn't know there was left there. It was a little tiny bit. This time we got summer wheat by Yiddling. Hey! Hey. Man, this cooler is better than I thought. Come on. Well, how freaking... You mean to tell me... Whoa. There we go. There you, go. you have order. Is that enough? That's enough. All right, the rest is mine. I guess I had it so frozen that it was it's coming out like uh, Old Faithful from Yellowstone, right? The, the, the geezer. The geezer, yeah. the geyser, I mean. Yeah. There you go. America's oldest brewery, Yenling, since 1829. A traditional <laughs> Weizen, Weizen beer. Summer wheat. Because summer is the end of this month. And we are in mid-June 2017. Yinling, summer wheat. This time I did not make a mistake like I did at the beginning of the show. Shame on me. I will induct myself into the Chisler's Hall of Shame and, and, uh, how can I punish myself? Lock the door. <laughs> no, not that bad. There you go, Wizen, summer wheat beer. For the first time on this show, for the first time, period. I am trying this. Yeah. 
has kind of a floral, not a, not a fruity flavor, but a, like a like a, a a floral flavor. It's different. It is different from the your typical uh, beer made from barley. Now I'm not sure if hops are used. I mean, I would imagine they are. I mean, without hops, you can't have beer, right? Beer. I mean. Bitterness is. I'm waiting till I finish what's in my mouth so I can taste it. Oh, you're eating? Are you eating a high protein, low carb power bar? Yeah. Which company is this? Power. Power. Power bar protein plus protein plus. Power bar protein plus. How many grams of protein? Twenty. Mm. Too many carbs, though. Is it low on carbs? Twenty-seven grams. Because the person who, who got them for you is not an educated they consumer. They for me. They were gotten for somebody who cannot have so much potassium. Oh. I, you, mean, I inherited them. You know I hear that uh, people that, that, um, that go on kidney dialysis have to keep their potassium low. That's what it is. For some reason. That's what it is because they piss too much. They will piss too much if they ingest too much potassium. Right. And they're trying to keep strain off their kidneys, right? Exactly. Same thing with protein. They have to keep their overall grams of protein to a minimum. And that includes, from what I was told, even vegetable protein, like from legumes. They, they have them, yeah. They have, on, a, they have a certain amount that you should. Okay. People on kidney dialysis. Right. I'm still trying to figure out what causes kidneys to fail to do their job. I, I have I have posed the question on holistic health talk, and I haven't gotten an answer yet. Uh, but anyway, maybe someday. This, I would assume this uh, century I will. I would assume overwork. Same thing with arthritis in shoulder or knee or something. You know that that comes over usage. From over usage. Is that, does that apply to bursitis too? No, bursitis is an infection of a... Uh, the bursa. The bursa, which is like a what, hole. When you say infection, you mean like... Inflammation. Oh, well, there's a difference. Infection and inflammation. Could be an infection. And itis is, is an inflammation that could be caused by an infection. Right. Or it could not be. Right. Right. Tendinitis is uh, is like uh, the famous uh, tennis elbow, right? Yes, or baseball pitchers that throw too many fastballs. Too many fastballs, they don't break it up. Over, over, over the head. Overhead, yeah, overhead. Well, my when I used to go, uh, when I used to take Brazilian uh, Gracie style jujitsu lessons, ah. um, this guy I know, a friend of mine, uh, uh, Jay Lolly, uh, he's in. He's been. Uh, he's had a black belt for over 30 years. He told me. He says for my sh for my shoulder injury, what you have to do is you have to refrain from any overhead pressing. No overhead pressing. So if I want to work my shoulders, they have to be like lateral raises. They have to be in a different manner. Now I use Indian clubs. <coughs> Indian clubs is circular training. Uh, excellent for the shoulders. All right, <clears throat> let us sink our teeth into these readings. Uh -huh. This time I really do have summer wheat for the lazy, hazy, crazy days of summer. And I, I still have, uh, I just want to say thank God, one of my favorite places to shop, Aldi's. Aldi Market is reopened after remodeling and uh, I uh, stocked up on the uh, Black Angus Beef Frankfurters. I, 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 I love a high quality, I, I won't eat any roadkill Frankfurter. So, you know, nationally advertised hot dogs, no way. No way would I eat that toxic garbage. But these are nice because they're like freshly made Frankfurters, you know, they have that snap to them when you bite into it, you know. They have that snap to it. And you can taste that it's all high quality black Angus beef. It's a German owned company. 
mostly international, uh, internationally made foods. And uh, they have a wonderful imported sauerkraut from Germany, Aldi. So, a salute to Aldi. All right, go ahead. Former <coughs> Minnesota governor and professional wrestler Jesse Ventura. And a uh, uh, broadcaster on Aura TV with his show Off the Grid, Jesse Ventura. Says... He hasn't been able to find work since his highly publicized defamation lawsuit work against the estate of American Sniper. I see him every weekday on Aura TV. What does he mean work? At his age, what does he want? Right, right, what, why does he want a regular job for? Author Chris Kyle. He's got money. So he will work for Russian television. Well, uh, uh, maybe, uh, maybe Vladimir Putin uh, likes the things he says, uh, the progressive things Jesse Ventura says. He scratches him where he itches. With a new commentary show, Ventura said on Thursday that he has personal assurances from Putin that the world, according to Jesse, won't be censored by the government-funded RT network. Well, that's very smart of Jesse, because Jesse Ventura will not tolerate censorship, and rightfully so. Ventura, 65 I, years old, lost I, 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 his health insurance oh, he did? with the Screen Actors Guild Union last year because he wasn't doing enough work in the industry. That's right, Jesse Ventura was in the movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger, Predator, among other spots. I can't get a job in the U.S. No one will touch me. Because of the, uh, the, um, the Kyle, what the fuck was his name again? American Sniper. The American Sniper, uh, uh lawsuit. I saw the movie the yeah. other day. Is, it, is this because of right-wing, uh, uh, black -blowing? The right wing were behind. It could be. It could be. It could yeah, be. Right wing black boy. It could be. In other words, he can't. He can't get an acting job out of Hollywood. That's what he said. Period. Uh, My United States Union throws me in the dirt, and who comes to my rescue? Russia. Vladimir Putin. Go for it, Jesse. As long as you know. As long as you're not, you're not censored. But I think Vladimir Putin loves the idea that Jesse Ventura exposes all the all the crap and dirt that goes on in the United States. I think that's the primary reason why Vladimir appreciates Could uh, be. Um, Jesse Ventura, and rightfully so. I hear two cats uh, duking it out outside. I don't hear nothing. Where do you hear all this stuff? I heard a. <laughs> And then it stopped. All right, never mind. It's not important. They make the same sound when the Chinese bring them off to the restaurant, right? Oh, my God. My grandfather used to call it chicken chow meow and chicken chow bow wow. My late grandfather. To quote an old Peter, Paul, and Mary song. Yeah. When will they ever learn? When will they ever learn? Even though I hate ballads of any kind. Folk music, I don't mind too much. As long as it's not that sappy. When will President Trump's supporters learn he does not have their interests or, <laughs> or even those of the country what, what, at heart? What did I just say at the beginning of this show? And I did not know he was going to read this. When will they realize he does not possess a hint of compassion for anyone but himself. Hey, some some flag waving uh, Trump pansy was pissed off that uh, that that uh, New York City uh, uh, Mayor uh, Bill De Blasio uh, really uh, doesn't feel like providing Baron Trump with any security in in New York. 
you know. When will they realize that he is far more dangerous to their security than any country or ethnic group? Yeah, but the same thing goes for the neoliberals that are devoted to, uh, let's say, Hillary Clinton. When will Republican office holders realize they are Americans first, not lemmings who followed Trump and take our country over the cliff. Wizen beer, summer wheat, yinling summer wheat beer. In the last few weeks, we have seen Trump the man in light of the tragedy in Britain, which most human beings responded to with sympathy. He responded with politics and diatribe when he appointed his security team, we were relieved that he had selected experienced and competent leaders, yet in his ignorance and hubris, he rejected their knowledgeable positions with regard to NATO, climate change, and the Muslim ban. During the campaign, Trump was promising his base good jobs but his climate policy will result in green research, progress, and many jobs going to other countries. While due to automation, the manufacturing jobs he promised will never materialize. He promised them better and cheaper health care, but the bill he supported will do just the opposite. He has reversed actions that keep their air and water clean, protect their voting and civil rights, enable their children to better afford college. His budget proposal will destroy the safety net many of them rely on. Ultimately, his supporters should be afraid of his lack of self-control his lack of respect for decency, truth, and the rule of law. One day, they will realize they have been conned by an unstable, narcissistic, uncaring, and dangerous individual. Um. One day, Republican office holders will admit what they already know, that to allow Trump to continue in his path would destroy our country. Hopefully, <clears throat> it will not be too late. I'm talking about an individual who um, has never done without a, 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 a single nanosecond of his life. He's had everything he's ever wanted. Uh, how, how can he possibly have compassion and empathy for the poor? And the same thing goes for his children. How could he possibly have compassion and empathy? I, 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 I mean, anybody can say what they want during a campaign. You know? Well, he said a lot, didn't he? You know, how could you feel... Hey, how could you feel one's pain? I, I mean, Bill pain. Clinton. Bill Clinton didn't feel your pain. Yeah, feel your pain. So how do you expect a Donald Trump to feel your pain? <clears throat> that has a nice floral flavor. I didn't think I was gonna like a wheat beer. In his recent column, James Bovard fails to make a coherent argument that President Trump's draconian food stamp cuts would really be a boon for the poor. A boon? The column starts off with the usual conservative nonsense, pointing out that under President Obama, from 2008 to 2010, 
food stamp enrollment skyrocketed. I think that Republicans and Donald Trump want the poor to start to take up a hobby called grazing. Just get on all fours outside and start nibbling on weeds, you know, bunny leaves, uh, various leafy weeds and, and, and uh, uh, grasses that are not sprayed with herbicides, especially not Monsanto's Roundup. And, you know, just get down there and graze like a, like a friggin' bo uh, uh, like a bovine creature. Yeah, and then more of the wild animals around will be in the cities because the poor are taking up their food stocks. <laughs> well, deer, we already have plenty of deer they freed, and, uh, they, and... They freed one from my uh, sewer uh, yesterday, a fawn. We have deer, we have foxes, we have uh, a bobcat, a black bear, uh, uh, Canada geese, mallard, ducks, um, uh, wild turkey are the newest uh, addition to the uh -huh. populated area. Wild turkey used to be very skittish towards human presence and uh, they decided, eh, screw it, we're used to these uh, smelly ass pe uh, mm -hmm. creatures on two legs. You know, so they decided to tolerate us, and especially when some humans feed them. Unfortunately, there are morons out there that give the beautiful wild mallard ducks uh, white bread, oh, and Canada geese too. Mallards are, uh, male, male mallards are beautiful animals. They have that, that iridescent jade green head. The females, forget it, are drab. I mean, that's how it is with uh, uh, many, many creatures. The females are not the colorful ones. Maybe, maybe it's to keep predators away from the nest, away from the eggs. Maybe the food stamp enrollment skyrocket under Obama was due to the Republican <coughs> caused great recession. Bovar then goes on to cite one surfer dude, get this, who abuses food stamps, although most of the recipients of this assistance are single mothers, Calabunga. children, and the elderly, not surfer dudes. So, so the surf Only 10%. <laughs> In other words, he's, 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 they're saying wait, surf, wait, surf wait, reduce wait, a bump, Wait, 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 explain it. Okay. Because you're not going to be able to understand how it's done. Only 10% of the recipients are able-bodied people who could work. Able-bodied. Able. Once the author has finished with the usual claims that food stamps are given to the unworthy, unworthy, he pivots to a claim that by cutting food stamps, we could cut <laughs> obesity. <laughs> yeah, by, by, by something called starvation. So on the, according to the Republicans, anyone receiving food stamps is unworthy. They're all unworthy, but it's, we're doing them a favor because obesity is at an epidemic proportion in the United States. So let's starve poor Americans. Exactly. That's one way to get them thin. Starve them. Citing many studies that <coughs> correlate food stamp recipients with overweight people. <laughs> it's an excuse. Well, it could be from all the stinking carbohydrates in the stinking cheap food. Oh, yeah, 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 but... Just yeah. to fill the belly. Not for nutrition purposes. Well, uh, um, uh, if, yeah. the, if the poor, uh, if certain poor, I'm not saying all, if certain poor people are wasting their food stamps on snack foods and junk food, cakes and cookies, potato chips, cheese doodles, what have you, um, then maybe, uh, Maybe maybe foods uh, classified as a snack, snacks, candy, junk food should be omitted. 
uh, like like pet food is. But the problem from uh, the uh, family's first card. The problem is, yeah, our general food could be categorized as candy. Well, Republicans wanted to omit uh, seafood steaks, cold cuts, uh, even even white in Wisconsin. Here we go again. Republicans in Wisconsin, you fucking assholes, want, uh, thought that the white potato was considered a luxury for the poor. They're fucking assholes in Wisconsin. Well, there you go. How does a northern state that far north, how could they possibly be so right wing is beyond me. But they are. Correlation is not causation. In fact, only 10% of food stamp funds are spent on sugary drinks and treats. That leaves 90% for food. Listen, a poor mother with young children is not going to uh, piss away her food stamps unless it's one of those fat, redneck, Walmart <coughs> shopping uh, 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 white trash hillbillies, inbred hillbillies, honey boo boo's mother. Yeah. Only people like that are stupid enough to spend all their food stamps on junk food and snacks. <clears throat> but your typical uh, mom, low income single mom, is not going to piss away her food stamps on garbage. Especially if she has children to support. If Trump and the Republicans truly want to cut food stamps drain on the taxpayer, they should be fighting for a federal $15 an hour minimum uh, wage. Uh, drain? Oh, the, the, but the military budget is never a drain. Oh, that protects us. With all, oh, it does? Yeah. What about the waste in the military budget? Ah, the hell with that. What about, plane, on, oh, what about planes that are never used? Jets that are, I mean, uh, uh, the missiles, tanks, tanks, missiles, tanks, tanks that are never used. Yeah. Yeah. Forcing the likes of the Waltons and Walmart fame to stop suckling at the tit of the government. Hey, tell the rich tell corporate CEOs and the rich to stop suckling at the tit of the United States government by not receiving any subsidies or corporate welfare. Okay, what did I say before? Hypocrisy and something else are, are, the, are the hallmarks of republics. Hypocrisy, well, greed, of course. Whoa. Greed. Yeah. And, um, something else. They could also end tax subsidies to the corn industry. I know I mentioned it. The ones who are guilty for all the sugar added to processed food. High fructose corn syrup GMO corn. And instead give tax subsidies to farms that grow vegetables and fruit so that the poor can't afford them. You know who should get all the tax subsidies and tax breaks? The small farmers. The small family-owned farms. That's the, how those things start out. Especially the organic farms, which are small family-owned farms. That's how the, these things start out. Big Agra. Big Agra is okay. the, are the ones that produce high fructose corn syrup. They, and GMO foods. They, they, they find their way into these programs and they take the money. The little guy doesn't get it. But that's how it starts out. Good intentions. You know? Well, uh, all the big charities started out with good intentions. That too. Now they became scams. Yeah. Only, uh, what is it, 25 cents or, or 10 cents on a dollar? ever goes to the worthy cause. If you donate to the March of Dimes or the United Way or the American Red Cross or any of these big charities, why do these big charities need CEOs that are making millions of dollars a year? I thought charities are supposed to be made up of volunteer employees who have compassion and empathy and want to volunteer their time. 
why is there a blood-sucking parasitic CEO in charge of the American Red Cross or, or the March of Dimes? Because everything in America should be like a business. You mean capitalism? Capitalism. And you need like and you need a paper pushing CEO yeah. making several hundred thousand a year with a golden parachute. You need that bum. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, um, um, I mean. Republicans, they're quick to call poor people lazy moochers, but they don't really, Republican politicians really, really do not work. No, they do not. I mean, your Republican Congress works less than part-time hours, and they never accomplish anything. And they're proud of it. What, what Republican bill ever favored uh, mainstream America, uh, let's say, over corporations? think of any. Not since Dwight D. Eisenhower's highway bill. Yeah. Super highways. They don't do anything for you, but yeah, you little sh you little schmucks keep on re-electing them. Electing and re-electing them. Like the schmucks uh, in Wisconsin. Maria Antoinette. Let them eat cake. Is credited with responding to the plight of the poor in the 18th century France by saying, let them eat cake. Yeah, I think Barbara Bush said something similar during Hurricane, after Hurricane Katrina. This is a step up for them. Oh yeah, sleeping on the floor of the uh, New Orleans Superdome yeah. is an improvement for the poor of New Orleans. For, the, for Trump and the Republicans, that saying oh, man. could be changed to let them not eat. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. The the demon Trump uh, and uh, the demon uh, Paul Ryan and uh, and Turtle Face demon Mitch McConnell and all of them. They, uh, I mean, these you're talking about. You're talking about real Christians, evangelical zealot Christians. Oh yeah. They want to starve off the poor. They want to smite the poor. I them. But, but the crooks that want to steal Social Security and 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 piss away your tax, uh, middle class taxpayers' money. Oh no, they shouldn't be smited. They no. should be rewarded for being criminals. Give them more. Give them more. Give them more. So, but there's always been a war against the poor by the rich. Always. Um, yes. But but I blame. Listen, I don't blame the forces of evil for doing what they normally do anyway by being evil. I blame the people that shoot themselves in both feet that keep on electing and re-electing them. <clears throat> people that don't have a pot to piss in, people that uh, are being strangled by the middle class tax burden. Meanwhile they believe Fox News that tells them that your your liberals are pissing away your tax money. Uh -huh. You know, Ronald Reagan used to shake his head and talk about, well, well, the tax and spend liberals, this and that, and the other thing. The tax and spend liberals, the liberal media. The tax and spend liberals are only, what is, what is a so, social services only comes to like 2% of the total budget. About one to two percent of the total budget is social services. Mm -hmm. So where is the mooching? It's in the fifty-seven percent of the budget, which is the wormhole military. Listen, they're obviously right? lying. Republicans are lying through their teeth. Uh, uh, um, middle, uh, blue dog, uh, uh, moderate. Or centrist is that the same? A centrist is a, mid, a middle, a middle, middle of the, of the road. middle of the road Democrat. No matter how you shake it, they're they're both establishment politics. Hmm. And this is why I'm so upset that Bernie Sanders, our revolution supporters, want to become <clears throat> absorbed into a new and better, a new and improved Democratic Party.
they want to save the Democratic Party. Good luck on that. I was divorced for three years ago. Yeah. And recently went on some dating sites to find a possible companion. Hey, there's a lot of uh, fake profile scammers on uh, social media and dating sites from Ghana and Nigeria. Beware. All the women that I met had posted photos that looked nothing like them. Uh-oh. I know. They don't, they're a misrepresentation of themselves. That's true. That is very true. It was embarrassing. Some of them are downright ugly. You usually meet in a public place. Yeah. So the gentlemanly thing to do is continue the encounter. Only do not follow up. Damn right. It would be so much nicer if women posted a recent photo or selfie so that there would be no surprises at the first date. Read my lips, you jabronis. Insist before you meet, before you meet some, someone from <clears throat> online dating, for your first encounter, insist on video chatting with Skype or Google Hangouts or even Facebook video chat. Get to know them first via video chatting before you meet because then you can avoid wasting your time, wasting your money on meeting them for a first date you avoid all the pitfalls and if they don't have a decent webcam and they don't have a decent fucking light bulb in their room so you can see what they look like then don't meet them it is really that simple <clears throat> you get to know them on, on video chatting and telephone and you'll have no problems this way you see first you have to see if your minds click before you can see if there's physical chemistry. You know, that, that, that puffy face guy on the, the, the puffy face old geezer on eHarmony, and that, and that tall, dorky, geek guy with the nasal voice on Match.com, they don't tell you this. James P. Madonna lays the truth on you about this. Words of wisdom. Go ahead. Case in point. Case in point. I had a date with a lady whose lady. photo showed her to be slim with black hair. Right, she was obese with uh, blonde hair? When she showed up, she had white hair. Oh, God. And had gained at least 30 pounds. That wasn't her. That wasn't her. She. Uh, yeah, but wait a minute. If she blatantly lied about her photo, he does not have to be a quote-unquote gentleman and, 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 and remain with her. She recognized I'm, me from I'm, my profile photo. Well, he was honest, obviously. Hold on. <coughs> Which was recent. Which was what? Recent. And, yeah, and, and real. Because I'm a gentleman. Ah, uh, but I'm cool. This guy and his gentleman, he sounds like a pussy. I made no mention of the discrepancy and made the most of our lunch. I think women would be wise to place a recent photo on their profile with the caption, what you see is what you get. You know what Luke Costello said about uh, these gentlemen? Suckers. They're suckers. That's what he used to say. Abby's answer. Oh my God. I agree. There should be more truth in advertising. <sighs> Which is why I am printing your letter. Listen, however, however, the same can be said for men who have also been known to fudge the truth about their height and their weight and whose photo features. More ways than one, the word fudge is applied with these obese women. Huh? You see, women always do that. They always throw back at you, well, men do it too. You know how 
listen, I don't know because I don't look at the guys on online media, but I do know for a fact that there are red flags that are easy to spot with, with fake profiles and with dishonest profiles. Finish up. <clears throat> there will be better outcomes, fewer disappointments if the moment of truth comes before the meeting. That's what I've been saying. And this woman is getting paid a lot of money for this article. Are you kidding me? I could have articles in every newspaper in the fucking country, in the world, giving advice. That article is finished, right? Yeah. All right. Online dating. When a woman just shows her photos from her chin up, that means she's obese. She's. You could tell if a woman is hiding something in her online dating photo. If it's blurry, she has something to hide. Mm -mm. If, if she's far away into the distance, she has something to hide. I, these are the photos. And again, from the chin up, not from the chin down, she's, she's quite uh, uh, ample in size. She's obese. She's a fat fuck. Uh, uh, in layman's term, she's a fat fuck. Um, often uh, some, some women will use uh, uh, photos of how they were in their 20s. Okay, if it looks that old, then she's an old bag. Using, uh, they, they, and another thing, they will use, the profile photo that a woman will use for online dating would, ha would be one where she has gobs and tons of, like, almost like, uh, laying spackle on, on, uh, on, uh, on plasterboard of makeup. She will have lots of makeup on. A woman of any age, I'm not just putting down the older woman, even young women do that. If they're not that good looking, they will put tons of makeup on, including lipstick and eyeshadow and eyeliner and all that stuff, get their hair done, and uh, that will be their profile photo. Make sure you insist on seeing other photos of them and also look at their other photos because I have seen a major difference mm -hmm. in the profile photo compared to the other photos. Beware, there's a lot of ugly motherfuckers out there that uh, try to get someone out of their league, way out of their league. Unless, they're, unless they give a fantastic blowjob and they and their sexual performance is ex is is far above average then and only then can an average looking or funny looking woman uh, um, be with a with a with a good looking guy who's in sh great shape how dare you try to acquire a man of that kind of superiority if you look like a freaking muppet I am done you have one more article, you just want to call it, a, call it a week. That's it, we're done. Progressive discussions. Thank you for joining us. <clears throat> All right. I will try my best not to make any more beer mistakes. Ah. But I did find the wheat beer to be interesting, the Weizen beer. You, you weren't too crazy about no. it. No. You weren't. You like the traditional barley... Lager. Barley and hops, and well, you gotta have water. Lager, you gotta, yeah, yeah, lager. <coughs> you even like the the porter, the dark beer. Yes. You even like that. That's good. Maybe I'll get that again. Yeah, you gotta have water. I mean, water is essential. I mean, other <laughs> But the thing, you know, the quality of water has a lot to do with all beverages, no matter sure. what it is. Absolutely. You have to start with high quality, filtered water or or good spring water it, it, water is essential what do you mean food same with food how are you gonna how are you gonna start with the, uh, a high carbohydrate hydrate crap food no you have you can't uh, uh, feed listen, the poor that listen i have tasted and hope for no obesity or i anything. have tasted sort of here i'll, I'll do this to piss off my critics that tell me i get up and down too much i'll piss them off even more I have tasted the difference between non-GMO, certified organic, wholesome food 
and crap food. Equivalent, equivalent food products. You know, and this is a big difference. You can taste quality. You can taste quality, just like you can taste the quality of someone who knows how to cook. Yeah. Who knows how to cook. Um, and that, that, that's it. It's, you can't fool Mother Nature, man. Yeah, but Republicans do not want the poor eating quality. But food. I hear their families eat organic. Okay. I hear the I hear the people in Washington and their families eat organic. If they're smart enough, I guess they do. I hear the uh, I hear Monsanto executives eat certified organic uh, high quality foods. The rich eat the these foods. If they know about them, yes, I'm sure they do. If they know about them. A lot of people suck to the car propaganda that there's no difference between quality food and, and garbage. Listen, listen. Okay? It's, it's really, if you don't have the common sense to know, if you're, let's say you're an average American, male or female, let's say you're poor, very poor, lower middle class, around that, that range. If you don't have the common sense to know that the people you vote for are really not changing the quality of your life and your standard your standard of living never rises and the quality of your life never changes after four years that should tell you something it's common sense now if you're but if you're poor and you live in a, in a way out yonder way out down yonder in the in the in the in the, in the southern or western states and you're obs and you're obsessed and spellbound by your evangelical cult, and you vote based on your stupid, unproven evangelical cult. Then you got bigger problems. You have bigger problems than than just having a lack of common sense. You really do. You really should jump into that live volcano. You know, you really are a waste of sperm. I'm serious.